An exchange is a message routing mechanism that is responsible for sending the messages to different queues. The type of an exchange determines how it sends the message to the queues. RabbitMQ supports different types of exchanges and in this video we will learn about the direct exchange, how to set it up, how it works and when to use this in your application. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video in the RabbitMQ series and thanks to AWS for sponsoring this video. I will be using Amazon MQ, a managed message broker that supports ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ to host my RabbitMQ instance. However, you can use one of the various options that RabbitMQ provides to host your instance. My name is Rahul and on this channel, you can find videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. Before we learn about the specific exchange type, let's first understand what an exchange is. If you're familiar with what an exchange is, feel free to skip to the next section. Exchanges are message routing agents and are responsible for sending messages to the different queues. An exchange routes the messages to zero or multiple queues based on the exchange type, the routing key, the header attributes, etc. Typically, when we think about a message-based application, we think about a producer, a queue, and a consumer. The producer produces the message, also known as the sender, and the consumer consumes or receives the message, also known as the receiver. The producer sends the messages to the queue and the consumer picks them up from the queue. However, in RabbitMQ, the producer does not send the message directly to the queue. The producer sends the message to an exchange and the exchange is responsible for routing these messages to the different queues. So the exchange basically sends copies of these messages to the different queues that are registered with it. With the exchange in between the producer and the consumer, we need to introduce two more concepts, which are binding and routing keys. A binding is what connects an exchange with a queue. You can think of this as a link or a rule that instructs the exchange on how to send or distribute these message copies to the different queues. So as you can see here, between the exchange and the queue, we would be specifying a binding. So the binding is what connects this exchange to these queues. You can have one or more bindings on an exchange which points to the same queue or different queues. A routing key is a message attribute that is used by the exchange to route the messages. Now this depends on the exchange type and we will see how this is used. Now a part of the routing key is also used when we specify a binding which is what the exchange uses to determine how to use this routing key on a message attribute. Now that you understand about exchanges, routing keys, bindings, let's dive into the topic of the direct exchange. A direct exchange routes the messages to a queue whose binding key exactly matches with the routing key of the message. This means both the keys should be an exact match. So when defining a binding, if we specify the key as Sydney, or if we specify the key as Brisbane in this case, which sends it to a different queue, this exchange looks at the message coming in and it checks on the routing key on that message. Now in this case, since the routing key is Sydney, it sends a copy of this message only to this binding, which has specified Sydney as its binding key. So only this queue is going to get this message in this case, and this consumer is going to pick that up. Now you can have multiple such bindings going to this queue, and similarly, as you can see here, you can have multiple bindings that goes to different queues as well. Now you can have one instance of this consumer pulling message from this queue, or you can have multiple consumers. In that case, only one of these consumers will be picking up the message because that is basically picking up a message from a queue, which we have seen in the introduction video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Let's see this in action from a .NET application. So let's jump on to Rider. So here I have an existing solution that's set up, which is Exchange Direct, which has the send and receive application. This is the exact same copy of the source code that we used in the previous video in this series. So if you need to get familiar with this, I highly recommend checking out the first video where I set up the solution. Now the send has the send.cs, which sends the message to the RabbitMQ. In this case, I have set it up with the connection details to connect to my Amazon MQ instance. So this creates a connection and sends the message using the channel to a default empty exchange. So when we use the basic publish, we specified the string dot empty. Now in this case, we will introduce the concept of a direct exchange and see how that works. Now the receive application is similarly setting up the connection factory to my Amazon MQ instance and receiving the messages from that. It uses an eventing basic consumer to pull down messages and process them. In 
this case, it simply writes it to a console. So let's see how we can introduce the concept of a direct exchange inside our sender and also have the receive use that to bind it to different queues. To start with, let's remove this declaration of the queue in the sender because the sender knows nothing about a queue. So in this case, let's comment this out and let's introduce the concept of an exchange. So we will be using channel dot exchange declare very similar to the queue declare and declaring a new exchange. Let's specify as weather underscore direct to simply show that this is a direct exchange. So we also need to specify the type. So we can use the exchange type dot direct which is a string in here. So we have successfully declared a new exchange weather underscore direct. Now we can start using this exchange name to send the messages. So instead of sending the message to a string.empty exchange, which is a default exchange, which is of direct exchange type. So let's remove this string.empty and let's specify weather.direct. So we can also refactor this into a variable and reuse that. So let's do control dot and let's specify introduce variable and let's specify this as the exchange name. So let's use the same exchange name in this case. Now the second parameter to this basic publish is actually the routing key. So to make this application more dynamic, let's get this routing key from the console input so that we can choose what routing key to use when we send messages. So let's introduce a new parameter to our send message and let's specify this as routing key and let's use that inside here instead of hello. Now we'll need to get the routing key when we send the message. So let's write again a console.write line. Please enter your routing key. Now this is going to be the routing key. So, so let's specify where routing key console dot read line. Now once we have the routing key, we can pass that as part of the sending message. Now in cases where this can be null, we can simply specify this as string dot empty so that it passes an empty routing key. Now with these changes, our changes to the sender is complete. It no longer knows anything about the queue and it is sending messages to an exchange. It also uses the routing key whenever it's sending this message. Let's switch over to our receive and see what we need to update there. Now in the receive application, this connects to the queue which needs to in turn be connected with an exchange. So we'll need to register the queue with an exchange before we start this receiver. So then it starts getting messages from the exchange that we just declared. So in this case, we are already creating a queue up here, which says queue declare and we are specifying the hello which is a hard-coded name in this particular case. To be more dynamic, let's get the message from the console. So let's specify line, and let's specify please enter queue name. So the queue name is going to be entered from here. So let's specify where queue name and let's say console.readline. Now this is going to be entered as the queue name. So let's use that to declare the queue. So instead of the hello, we are going to specify the queue name that's going to come from this application when it's run. Now once the queue is declared, we need to set up the bindings with the exchange. That is the exchange that we created in here, which is weather underscore direct. So let's come back here and let's again ask the routing keys that needs to be set up. So let's specify console.writeline, enter routing keys. Now in this case, we are going to support multiple write routing keys and it will be comma separated. So let's get the routing key. Let's do console.readline like before, which gives you the routing key. And in this case, we can split this using comma. So let's simply use routing key dot split and specify comma as the split. And also let's ignore the empty entries. So we are going to get multiple routing keys if there is a comma in the routing key. If not, we're just going to get one key. Now let's use these routing keys to set up our bindings. So if there are any routing keys inside here, so let's specify if routing keys dot any. We can loop through these routing keys and bind the queue. Now, in case there is nothing, we can simply bind with the string dot empty. So let's specify that first. So let's use channel dot queue bind. And in this case, we'll need to specify the queue name, which is going to be coming from as a variable. So let's specify the variable name. We need to specify the exchange. So in this case, this is going to be weather direct. So we are going to bind with the weather direct and we can specify the routing key. In this case, it's going to be string dot empty, which means any empty routing keys is going to be bound to this particular queue. Now, if we have multiple routing keys inside here, let's use the for each and let's loop through these routing keys. So each of these key, we can bind bind that in here. Let's specify channel dot bind again like before. Let's specify the queue name 
the exchange type which is going to be weather underscore direct and let's also specify the key in this case so this is going to create multiple bindings with that exchange type and use this routing key to specify that those messages need to be routed into this queue the rest of the code is going to behave exactly the same so we are going to pull the messages from this queue and use that for processing now if we scroll down below you can see here the basic consume is also registered on the queue name so let's remove this hello and use the queue name in here so all the messages coming into the queue as part of these bindings is going to get processed by this consumer which is simply going to write it to console so let's run this to see this in action let's navigate into the send application and let's use dotnet run let's also open another console on the side and navigate to the exact same folder and let's go to the receive application and let's specify dotnet run as well so now this is going to start the receiver it's asking for the queue name so in this case let's specify the queue name as nsw which is stands for new south wales which is the state in which sydney is there so let's specify the queue name as nsw and let's specify the routing key as sydney so any message with the routing key of sydney is going to get sent to this particular queue now this is waiting for messages so let's come back here and let's enter the message so let's specify in this message test and let's specify the routing key which is going to be sydney for our first test now since this exactly matches it is going to send the message here now if i start one more consumer down below here so let's card a new consumer here let's navigate to that exact same folder and let's specify dotnet run again now in this case let's specify the queue name as qld which stands for queensland and let's specify the routing key as brisbane which is a city within queensland now this is waiting for messages in here so let's specify a new message here so let's say send again and in this case let's specify the routing key as brisbane so as you can see only this receiver received that message and the one with the routing key of sydney did not receive that now if there is another message in here which has sydney that's going to come only to the sydney consumer so let's spend again test and let's specify sydney as the key and as expected only this queue and the consumer gets that message now if you send a message that is not matching with either of these routing keys in that case it is not going to get delivered anywhere and that message is going to get lost because there are no bindings for this specific routing key now if i switch over to my amazon console navigate to amazon mq and let's navigate to my rabbit mq instance and let's scroll to the rabbit mq console to log in to this console so you here you can see the different exchanges queues and the channels that's getting defined so if i navigate into exchanges here you can see the weather underscore direct exchange being created so this is the new exchange that we created so if we navigate further into that you can see that on this exchange there are two bindings so these bindings are one for the q nsw and the other one for the q qld so these are the two ones that we created and we can also see the routing keys for these particular queues now you can go and unbind from here which will remove the bindings on this particular exchange on this particular queue you can click further into that which goes into this queues section or you can navigate into the queues manually and go to the queues from there as well so if i switch over to the queue section you can see there is nsw and qld so let's navigate into one of them and you can see the number of consumers that is listening on that queue now in this case we only have one consumer which is listening on this particular queue which is on nsw so if i navigate back to my console and let's create a new instance of this consumer so let's create a new tab let's navigate into the exact same folder in here and let's dotnet run this again let's specify the exact same queue name which is going to be nsw and let's specify the routing key as sydney which means we have another consumer that is listening to this exact same binding now if i come back to my rabbitmq console you can see that there are two consumers in here now only one of them is going to get messages from this queue so now if i go back to the console and send a new message hello and let's specify the routing key as sydney one of this consumer has picked it up now if i send again and use the same sydney 
the other one is going to get picked up. Based on the message dispatching style that you have set up between round robin and fair exchange, these messages will be distributed amongst these consumer. If you're new to the dispatching styles, check out the video that is linked here and also in the descriptions below. Now, if I stop one of these instances, so let's come here and stop the instance for the QLD. And if messages comes in, these messages are going to get piled up in our queue. So let's say test one and let's specify the routing key as Brisbane. This consumer, since it's not working, it's not going to process these messages. So let's send another message and use the same routing key. And if these messages are going to be continuously queued up inside our queue. So if I switch back to the queue and go into the QLD queue, you can see that there are two messages that's ready to be processed. Now, as soon as the consumer comes back up online, it is going to process those messages. So let's specify .NET run here. Let's specify QLD as the queue name and let's specify the routing key as Brisbane. Now, in this case, this is already processed the two messages that we sent and that was queued up in our queue. So if I refresh this, we have zero messages because both of them were picked up by this particular consumer. Now, as we saw before, you can also have this wired to multiple routing keys. So let's stop this consumer again and let's start it up again and register it with multiple binding keys. So in this case, let's specify QLD and let's specify the routing keys as Brisbane comma GC, which stands for Gold Coast. So there are two bindings that is going to get created. Now, if I send this message again, and let's specify the routing key as Gold Coast, that is also going to come into this particular consumer. Because now this consumer is listening for two of these routing keys and two of them is going to get sent to this queue QLD. So if I send another message here and let's specify Brisbane as the routing key, that's also going to be picked up by this consumer, which is listening on this QLD queue. So if I switch back to my RabbitMQ console and go to the exchanges, and if we navigate to the weather direct, you can see here that there are three bindings. So you can see there is two for the QLD queue, which is on the routing key Brisbane and also Gold Coast. So any message coming into this exchange, which has Brisbane or Gold Coast as the routing key, is going to be sent into this same queue. You can also have the exact same key that is going to go into two different queues. So if I register NSW with the key GC, this queue is also going to get that exact same copy of the message. So let's come back to our console. Let's stop this processor and let's start this up again. So let's specify .NET run. In this case, we're going to specify NSW again, but we're going to specify the routing keys as Sydney and also GC, which is going to be common in both these cases. So now if I come back to our exchange declaration, you can see there is NSW and GC that is getting created. So GC is getting duplicated and sending to both these queues. So if I come back to our sender and let's test it, again with the key GC and you can see both of these got this message. So let's specify this to be more clear. So let's specify testing GC and let's specify GC again. So here you can see we got a message in here and also we got this message inside this consumer. So this is listening to the NSW queue and this one is listening to the QLD queue. So as you can see, use the direct exchange in RabbitMQ when there is a direct mapping from the routing keys to the queues. So in these cases, the keys were exactly matching as that on the binding key. So when you need point-to-point -point communication or you exactly know the mapping for one particular routing key to the, uh, the binding or the consumer that it needs to go, you can use the direct exchange type. I hope that helps you to understand about the direct exchange type in RabbitMQ, how to set it up and also how it works in routing the messages. We saw the different scenarios in which the direct exchange type can be bound to one queue or also multiple queues. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. If you want to be notified of the future videos where I will be publishing more about the different exchange types in RabbitMQ, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.